Hey guys, Loading Gears here. Welcome back to my Metal Gear Solid lore video. In this episode, and possibly the next few episodes, we will cover the game that brought most Metal Gear Solid fans into the Metal Gear Solid world. That being, well, Metal Gear Solid. The first Metal Gear Solid game, since the games before were simply called Metal Gear. And the first 3D Metal Gear game. And this was the first Metal Gear game where we got to really make a connection with Solid Snake and other characters which will make constant returns to the series, thanks to the glorious 3D polygon graphics and the voice acting. But anyways, let's begin. Metal Gear Solid is the 8th game in the story, despite the fact that it was the 3rd Metal Gear game to ever be made. The game was made in 1998, although it was based in 2005. It was also the only Metal Gear game to get a remake, which came about in 2004 for the GameCube. I'll be using cutscenes from both of these versions of the game, depending on which I think is better or more lore friendly. Though I'll be honest, I'll probably be using most of, um, mostly the remake um, cutscenes, since I don't really have a lot of audio in these videos, and what I like about the original cutscenes is mostly the voice acting or the music. Alright. Metal Gear Solid is also the only Metal Gear game to have two separate endings depending on a, on a decision you make. Um, however, only one is lore friendly, so I'll be focusing on that one. I will however be mentioning the other one briefly for the sake of getting a tidbit of relevant information if you only, um, that you only get in that ending. The year is 2005, six years after the Zanzibar land disturbance. Solid Snake has retired from his role in Foxhound and is living his life in Alaska with his many huskies. Yes, he has indeed become the male canine version of the cat lady. During February, a group of Foxhound members along with Next Generation Special Forces rebelled against the US government while on a mission on a remote island with a nuclear weapon facility called Shadow Moses. This group was called the Sons of Big Boss and it was led by a man called Liquid Snake. They took over the base holding any Foxhound members who didn't join the rebellion prisoner and made demands to the US government to hand over Big Boss' corpse along with one billion dollars. If their demands were not met within 24 hours, they would use an advanced, nu uh, an advanced weapon system held in Shadow Moses Island to launch a nuclear weapon. This advanced weapon is, of course, none other than another Metal Gear. This Metal Gear being called Metal Gear Rex. At the request from the Secretary of Defense, the former leader of Foxhound, Roy Campbell, who was now retired, was convinced to lead the operation against the Sons of Big Boss. Roy Campbell convinced the now legendary soldier Solid Snake to come out of retirement and help with this threat. Solid Snake, now sporting a grumpy cynical attitude, accepts the mission. Just to get some terminology straight, the Next Generation Special Forces, also known as the Genome Army or Genome Soldiers, were a group of soldiers who underwent gene therapy in order to enhance their combat abilities, but we'll cover this in more detail way later on. During his briefing, Solid Snake was injected with nanomachines by Dr. Naomi Hunter. These nanomachines would help Snake in multiple physical ways by sim um, simulating certain nerves in his body, but most of all, it would help Campbell, Naomi, and the rest of Snake's backup to keep track of his status and location. As they approached Shadow Moses Island via a submarine, Campbell informs Snake that his involvement in this mission was because his niece, Meryl Silverberg, was one of the Foxhound soldiers being held prisoner, as she did not join the rebellion. So Snake's objective were to rescue her, rescue the DARPA chief, aka Donald Anderson, rescue the Armstead president, Kenneth Baker, and learn how capable of launching a nuclear strike the terrorists actually are. His support team would consist of Campbell as his commander, Dr. Naomi Hunter as the local SAS dropper, or his medic, Mei Ling, a young data analyst who created Snake's radar and who saves your game. 
And finally, Nastasha Romanenko, a military analyst who tells Snake about certain types of weapons and nuclear um, nuclear missiles. By the way, in case you didn't remember from the tapes in Metal Gear Solid 5, Donald Anderson, the DARPA chief, is none other than Sigint from Metal Gear Solid 3. The same Sigint who worked for Zero in Cypher. The same Sigint who took on the role of creating a system of AIs now called the Patriots after Zero disappeared. Alright, so with only 18 hours left, Snake begins his insertion into Shadow Moses underwater while two F-16s were deployed as a diversionary tactic. Campbell takes this opportunity to inform Snake of the Foxhound members he would be dealing with, that being Decoy Octopus, Master of Disguise, Revolver Ocelot, a Master Gunslinger, Vulcan Raven, a Huge Muscular Shaman, Psycho Mantis, a Wielder of Many Psychic Abilities, Sniper Wolf, a Deadly Sniper, and finally Liquid Snake himself, the leader of the, of the bunch, who is said to resemble Snake. And if any of those looked or sounded similar, congratulations, you've been paying attention. Snake makes it to the underground warehouse under the base just in time to see the terrorist leader, Liquid Snake, ascending on an elevator. After waiting for the elevator to return, Snake uses it to go up and makes it to the heliport of the tank hangar building. Just in time to see the um, to see Liquid lifting off on a Hind D helicopter. Metal Gear Solid has a fetish with these kind of helicopters for some reason. Um, mentioning that he's going to take care of some bothersome flies, meaning the F-16s. Once that was over, Snake heads. Um, Snake makes his way to the ventilation shaft of the tank hangar. At which point he gets a call from his old mentor, Master Miller who volunteered into the mission after he heard about it from Campbell. Apparently confidentiality is not a thing. Once inside, Snake makes his way to the prison cells in the first floor basement. There, he crawls into the vents in order to reach the cell where the DARPA chief, Donald Anderson, was being held. Donald tells Snake that the terrorists do indeed have nuclear capability thanks to Metal Gear Rex. Which was news to Snake. Up until this point, all he knew was that they threatened to launch a nuke. Snake now knows that he is up against a new incarnation of his old buddy Metal Gear. However, the terrorists needed two detonation codes to arm Rex. One which only Donald Anderson knew and the other which only Kenneth Baker knew. However, unfortunately, they already had Donald Anderson's um, code um, because Mantis got it out of him through mind reading. But to Snake's fortune, there was a PAL system um, which would allow Snake to deactivate Metal Gear. This however required three keys. As Snake is about to lead Donald to safety, Donald starts getting antsy and, um, and starts asking Snake if he's sure he wasn't told of any other way to activate or deactivate Metal Gear. After denying knowledge multiple times, the House plan to give in to the terrorist demands. That's their problem. It has nothing to do with my orders. But what about the Pentagon? Pentagon. Donald Anderson yells in pain as he experiences what seemed to be a heart attack. After a few seconds of yelling, Donald Anderson falls dead, leaving Snake confused. Snake reports to these. Um, Snake reports these events to Campbell and Naomi, and they both seem surprised. However, Snake believes that there is something Campbell isn't letting Snake know, but he gets nothing out of him. A female soldier in the next in the cell next to Snake, um, who hears the whole commotion through the wall, manages to subdue the prison guard and steal his uniform. Somehow. Afterwards. He opens the door for Snake and waits for him to come out. When he does, she aims her gun at him and tells him not to move, surprising him. After she asks herself if Snake is liquid, Snake mocks her for a bit, calling her a rookie and questioning if she could even pull the trigger when, she, when he noticed her arm shaking and that her safety wasn't even off. Is this the first time you ever pointed a gun at a person? Your hands are shaking. <gasps>
Can you shoot me, rookie? They are ambushed by soldiers, and after they fight them off, the female, the female soldier escapes. Snake run, runs after her, but is stopped when she starts shooting at him. During the shootout, Snake witnesses what he believes is a hallucination. Um, however, when, he's ask, when he asks Naomi if the nanomachines are, are acting up, she tells him that they're not, and she confirms that what he saw must have been some kind of psychic interference from Psychomantis. So it's possible that her shooting at him was Psychomantis controlling her. Snake then heads towards the armory in the second floor basement of the tank hangar, where he would find Kenneth Baker in a concealed room he only found after blowing a hole on the wall that really wanted to keep him secure. Baker was tied up to a metal beam in the center of the room with C4s all around him. As he's about to rescue, uh, a snake is about to rescue Baker. Snake is confronted by none other than Revolver. That's Major Ocelot. The name's Ocelot. Ocelot. Revolver Ocelot. And yes, it is indeed the same Ocelot, a good 21 years older than we last saw him. But he's still trying to rock the gunplay. Anyways, Snake and Ocelot engage in a duel, to which neither is victorious. Ocelot congratulates Snake, telling him that he is quote unquote, You're pretty good. Still using that phrase. As Ocelot springs out of a corner to shoot Snake, his hand is cut off by an invisible entity that moves around the, the room quickly. This entity manages to cut, uh, to cut Baker from his bonds before making him himself visible as Ocelot runs away with a missing hand. This entity was some kind of cyborg ninja who Baker seemed to have knowledge of as he said, That, that exoskeleton. After saying this, the ninja goes on a frenzy and starts to wildly attack Snake. After, a, after the reach a standoff, Following a Matrix inspired battle, the ninja retreats, leaving Snake once again very confused. Who the hell? Solid Snake then heads over to Baker to try to help him up. Baker told Snake that they managed to get his code through torture after he resisted Mantis's mind probe. When Snake asked how he resisted, Baker told him that everyone with these kind of high level secrets have a type of mental insulation which helps protect against people with psychic abilities because apparently they were prepared for people with psychic abilities. Um, this came as a surprise to Snake since the DARPA chief told him that Mantis got his code through mind reading. When Snake told Baker that the DARPA chief had a heart attack, he called him a fool as if he, as if he knows something Snake doesn't. But Snake doesn't ask him anything further. Knowing that the terrorists now have both code, Snake asks Baker about the PAL code, card keys. Baker tells him that he gave, he gave his key to the female soldier that Snake encountered before. When Baker told Snake that she was a new recruit, Snake wondered if this uh, female soldier could possibly be Meryl, Campbell's niece. Baker then tells Snake how to acquire Meryl's codec number which he says is written in the back of the CD case. Meaning the actual case of this actual CD of the actual Metal Gear Solid game. Fourth wall breaking before it was cool. Um, in case the PAL code plan doesn't work out however, Baker tells Snake to head to the nuclear warhead storage building in order to find the lead engineer of Metal Gear Rex, um, the Metal Gear Rex project, since he would know how to stop Rex. The name of this engineer was, ready for this? Hal Emmerich, son of Huey Emmerich and Strangelove. Apparently the Emmerich genes must have a nuclear weapon engineer written into it. After Baker hands Snake a CD containing the Metal Gear Rex text, uh, test data, which Baker acted sure that this was Snake's mission all along, Snake questioned Baker about the Cyborg Ninja. Baker tells him that this was quote unquote Foxhound's dark little secret. 
and that Dr. Naomi Hunter would know better than him about it. As Baker began to urge Snake to stop Rex's launch, he began having a heart attack, similar to that of the DARPA chief. As he's dying, he starts rambling about being double-crossed by the Pentagon, and how the Pentagon is just using Snake. They're just using you for... But he doesn't get to elaborate before dying, leaving Snake confused again. What the hell? Snake contacts Campbell, who again acts surprised, but Snake again feels like there is something Campbell is not telling him. So like a good soldier, Snake continues on his mission with no information. He calls the female soldier, who indeed turns out to be Meryl. She goes all fan um, fangirl on him when she realizes that he is the legendary Solid Snake. Could you be Snake? Are you Solid Snake? That's what some people called me. The legendary Solid Snake? You? After getting some smooth lines in with Meryl, Meryl tells Snake that he looks just like Liquid Snake. But Snake is just as confused about that as she is. Meryl continues to tell Snake that the whole base is just um, a front owned by a dummy corporation and that the true purpose of the base was always to develop and test the new uh, Metal Gear Rex along with a new type of nuclear warhead. Foxhound and the Genome Soldiers were called in for um, the test launching of the dummy nuclear warhead of Rex. And that's when the rebellion happened. Merrill informs Snake that Emmerich is in the second floor basement of the nuclear warhead storage building. And after some dramatic tales about Merrill not being able to shoot the guards because the thought of her bullets ripping through their flesh made her sick, and Snape give, Snake giving her some advice about how killing gets easier the more you do it, Meryl opens the cargo door for Snake, which leads to a snowfield leading to a nuclear warhead storage building. Meryl tells Snake that she will go ahead of him, feeling um, safe with the guard's uniform, even though Snake advises her not to as she is too much of a rookie to fend off for herself. But Meryl figured that this is the only way she could truly see if she's cut out to be a soldier, like her father, Roy Campbell's brother, Matt Campbell, who died in battle in the Gulf War. When Snake makes it to the snowfield, he gets a call from a hidden frequency. The person on the other side, um, on the other line, told him to be careful as there were mines in, this, in that snowfield and a tank waiting to ambush him on the other side. When Snake asked him who, he's, uh, who this was, he simply told him to call him Deep Throat. It's a reference to the Watergate scandal, don't be dirty. Um, he told, uh, Deep Throat told Snake that he is quote unquote, one of your fans. Does this sound familiar? Anyways, after Snake carefully makes it through the mines, he is ambushed by the tank, mentioned by Deep Throat. The driver is, um, is Foxhound member Vulcan Raven, along with two other Genome soldiers. Snake, however, being his badass self, manages to defeat them by throwing grenades into the opening of the tank until finally he threw a grenade into the tank barrel and blew up the insides, causing a soldier to fly out. Snake grabbed the card key, leading to the nuclear warhead storage building, and head headed off. But Raven was not dead. Somehow. As Snake walks away, a conversation is heard between Liquid and, and Raven, in which he reveals that this fight was but a test to see what Snake's fighting capabilities were like. Apparently, Liquid did not want to kill him just yet. Snake makes his way to Dr. Emmerich's lab by retrieving a remote-controlled missile in order to destroy the power panel, which was powering an electrified floor leading to the lab in a hallway filled with gas. Most secure lab ever. In the hallway leading to the lab, Snake found multiple corpses of guards which seem to have been killed by some kind of blade. At this point, Snake witnesses the last guards being killed. We get to see the culprit, but Snake doesn't. And that would be the cyborg ninja from before. 
Snake discusses seeing bodies being killed by some type of sword with Campbell and Naomi, and although Naomi brushed it off, she seemed to know something about her, about it. The ninja enters Hal's Emmerich's lab, and Snake follows behind him. When Snake enters Emmerich's lab, the ninja is slowly approaching um, Emmerich and about to attack him, at which point, Emmerich pees himself. The ninja asks Emmerich, quote unquote, Where is my friend? But Emmerich has no idea what he's talking about. At this point, Snake attempts to shoot him, but the ninja quickly reacts and cuts his bullet in half. The ninja calls him by name, or code name, and tells him that he has been waiting for him. He tells him that he is neither enemy nor friend, although he just asked Emmerich where his friend is, but alright. Um, and that he has been re and that he has removed all obstacles so that they can have a battle to the death something he has apparently been waiting for a long time he is however not motivated not motivated by something as trivial as revenge he believes that a fight to the death with snake is the only way his soul can rest the ninja seemed not to care um, whether or not he lived through this battle he literally just wants to fight with snake Hal Emmerich runs into a locker and the battle begins. During this battle, one thing is for certain. The ninja didn't just want any kind of fight. He wanted a hand-to-hand -hand fight with Snake. While he was on his last foot, he would say things like, That's it, I remember that punch. And do you remember Snake? The feel of battle, the clashing of bone and sinew. After a long hand-to-hand -hand battle, which Snake and the, ninja, and the Ninja seemed very evenly matched. The Ninja asked Snake, Do you remember me now? It can't be. You were killed in Zanzibar. And a few seconds later, the Ninja goes crazy like he did the first time, saying that he is losing himself, before st storming out of the room. Snake calls Campbell to reassure what I hope you have all figured out at this point. That being, that the ninja is none other than Gray Fox. Colonel, that ninja is Gray Fox. No doubt about it. Campbell reacts in disbelief, as Gray Fox should have been killed in Zanzibar land. However, Naomi comes, out, comes into the conversation and reveals her knowledge of him. Apparently, right after Snake and Campbell retired from Foxhound, Naomi's predecessor, Dr. Clark, started the Genome Soldier experiment using Gray Fox as the main test subject after she revived him. Because in Metal Gear Solid, technology is magic. So after Zanzibar Land, they retrieved Gray Fox's body, revived him, and experimented on him. During these experiments, Dr. Clark and her team filled um, Gray Fox with um, drugs and fitted him with this exoskeleton for four years. The genome soldiers of today all came from those experiments. At some point, Gray Fox managed to escape, killing everyone in the lab in an explosion, including Dr. Clark. Naomi says that she didn't reveal this information because it was confidential, though Snake thinks there were other reasons for this. But of course, like he has been doing this whole time, no further questions. Snake ends the conversation by saying that even though he would rather not kill Gray Fox, he believes that that's what Gray Fox wants and he's sure that he will meet, they will meet again. In case you are wondering, yes, Dr. Clark is indeed the same Dr. Clark we know as Paramedic. One by one, this game is killing off the original founders of Cypher, in case you haven't noticed. Naomi only referred to Dr. Clark as a he because nobody knew Dr. Clark's identity, so they assumed she was a man. Remember, Huey said this to Venom Snake um, during one of the cassette tapes of Metal Gear Solid 5. This Dr. Clark is a complete ghost, even to others in his field. His age, where he comes from, that might not be his real name. And I can't even say for sure he's a he. 